District Attorney Fani Willis in Fulton County, Georgia, is leading an investigation into Trump's efforts to reverse that state's 2020 results. But a judge has just ruled that Willis cannot question one of the so-called fake electors who took part in the scheme. The reason? Willis recently hosted a fundraiser for that Republican's political opponent. Let's go to CNN's Kara Scannell. Kara, walk us through the judge's ruling here. Well, Anna, that's right. The judge here in Fulton County disqualifying Fonnie Lewis from investigating this one particular fake elector. That's Georgia State Senator Burt Jones. Now, he was one of the fake electors. He's also running for lieutenant governor. And the judge saying that Fonnie Lewis um, had created a conflict, as he put it, uh, an actual and untenable conflict by hosting a fundraiser for the rival uh, for that candidate for that position. Uh, now, Fonnie Lewis's office is investigating a number of these fake electors. Uh, this ruling does not apply to all of them. It just applies to Bud Jones and the judge saying that uh, while she can continue to collect evidence and ask questions about him with other witnesses, she cannot bring a case against Jones, that she cannot continue to call him a target of the investigation and the report by the special grand jury cannot include him in it. If, you know, whatever evidence she amasses, if there's something that they think could be worthy of prosecution, that will go to another prosecutor to make that charging decision. So for Jones, he is now um, free from this investigation under Fonnie Lewis, but her investigation into the other electors um, can continue and into the broader issues of the activities of the former president. And again, we're talking Fonnie Willis, the DA in Fulton County, and her investigation, nonetheless, is still charging forward. Today, one of the targets of Trump's pressure campaign, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, is taping a sworn statement for the special grand jury there. What can you tell us about this key testimony? Yeah, so he is one of the most high-profile witnesses so far that is appearing uh, before the grand jury. Now, he's doing this in a recorded testimony today. It will be presented to the grand jury at some point in the future. That accommodation was made because he is the governor of the state. And now, he's someone of interest because he's one of the Georgia officials that Trump reached out to after the 2020 election. And Trump had asked him in a phone call uh, if he could convene a special, sec a special session uh, and have the state legislature overturn Biden's victory. Uh, Trump also wanted him to order an audit of the signatures on the absentee ballots. Now, Kemp had refused to do either of those things. Uh, you know, this comes though as this investigation is really ramping up. Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, has been ordered to appear next month before the grand jury. And um, one of the other lawmakers, a Republican, Jody Heiss, he's going to be in court today trying to challenge a subpoena for his testimony. Uh, and of course, the other state electors, apart from uh, Bud Jones, will be appearing this week before the grand jury. Jury. Anna. Kara Scannell, it's a moving investigation. A lot of parts there. Thank you for staying on top of it. With us now, political reporter for the Atlanta Journal Constitution, Patricia Murphy, and former senior investigator for the January 6th committee, John Wood. He's also running for Senate in Missouri as an independent. Patricia, Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, where does he fit into this story? So we know here in Georgia that uh, former President Donald Trump contacted Governor Brian Kemp on more than one occasion. On one occasion, he asked the governor to call in a special session to reverse the results of the 2020 elections. Uh, uh, Trump has obviously contacted multiple Georgia officials, including Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. We know all about that call to Raffensperger because it was taped, but we know very little about what Donald Trump said to Brian Kemp. And so that's what this testimony is really going to be getting into today. John, the New York Times did a deep dive into this investigation over the weekend and noted that the district attorney involved, Fonnie Willis, has used racketeering in the past in many of her prosecutions. So what does that mean if she were to use that here, racketeering, just broadly define it, and how would it apply to this specific investigation? Well, it would mean that she would have to find that there was a, a corrupt organization of some sort, uh, and that, of course, uh, Donald Trump was the leader of that. And so, you know, early reports were that she was focused very much on the so-called fake electors, which were the Trump electors who cast their votes in states that Trump lost. But uh, this interview of uh, Governor Kemp suggests that she's looking at a lot more than that, and in particular focusing on Donald Trump's conduct and the calls that he made uh, to try to get state officials to change the outcome of the election. An organization, what would that have to entail, legally speaking? How many people involved, at what level, and in what types of communication? 
Yeah, so I'm actually not an expert on Georgia law. So if it's uh, Fonnie Willis, it would be a Georgia law charge rather than a federal charge. And I'm not an expert in Georgia law, but essentially she has to show that, you know, two or more people were working together as part of an organization that was corrupted, essentially. Patricia, you know, you're down there. What's the sense of how fast, how quickly this is all moving? So we've seen an absolute parade of Georgia officials come in front of the special grand jury. We've seen um, the attorney general of the state, obviously Brad Raffensperger, a number of state lawmakers. So we've seen a number of people. Fonnie Willis has said she will halt this investigation if it gets too close to the 2020 election. That gives us 2022 election. Rather, that gives us a sense that this could still be going on through the fall. She said she won't uh, end it prematurely just to uh, cooperate with an election date. So we don't know exactly when this is going to wrap up, but it certainly does feel like she is reaching a crescendo of the people, uh, especially here with the governor. Um, he is a very big witness. They've scheduled it videotape testimony to work with his schedule, but he's absolutely the highest ranking official that we've seen so far. And it's um, in a process of getting sort of to the close, higher up officials and then the closest to former President Donald Trump. John, if charges are brought here, as you correctly know, we're talking about Georgia law, Georgia charges, state charges. What would the likelihood of conviction be? Our Ellie Hoding points out it's a high bar and there are lots of steps in between charges and ultimate conviction, including perhaps trying to move this to federal courts. What do you see? Well, certainly getting a conviction is a high bar, but prosecutors keep that in mind when they make the charging decision. So generally, prosecutors don't like to bring charges unless they feel confident that they can convict a jury beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, I'm not saying that Fonnie Willis will necessarily get to that point, but that's something she's going to take in mind before she makes a charging decision. And Patricia, she has been chastised, at least some, for some political activity sort of separate from this. Explain what happened. That's exactly right. Fonnie Willis is an elected Democratic official as the DA in Fulton County. She held a fundraiser for Charlie Bailey, who is the Democratic nominee uh, running for lieutenant governor. She also has notified the Republican nominee for lieutenant governor, State Senator Burt Jones, that he is a target of this investigation. Burt Jones is very close to Donald Trump and uh, worked to serve as a fake elector here in the state. So she has held a fundraiser for the opponent of somebody who is a target of her investigation. The judge said uh, it may not technically be illegal, but it was sort of a what were you thinking moment. He said that to her in open court. We were there. We have um, uh, noted that that was really a public uh, display of chastising the district attorney. Her camp has said that was a fundraiser for the primary election, not the election against Burt Jones, but it certainly has been a moment where a lot of people here in the state were agreeing with the judge sort of what were you thinking? This is a very high profile investigation, um, but she again is an elected uh, Democratic official and uh, said that she's kind of doing these two things separately. I don't expect her to hold another fundraiser for Charlie Bailey in the future, though, certainly not before this is over. All right, Patricia Murphy, John Wood, thanks to both of you.